Okay, for the WebQuest assignment, I'm going to have you package it as a uh, Glockster format. So what we're going to do is um, you'll sign in for an account um, with this website, glockster.com. And what you'll do is since you can create uh, hyperlinks within this, um, you know, you can create a WebQuest because of that feature. So I've already kind of prepared a framework for, for what it would look like um, within this website, right, within Glockster. So I've got um, a component over on this side here, right, uh, WebQuest for History, and a brief intro that students are going to be um, kind of immersed in this role that they're doing family research. But really what I'm interested as an outcome is them being able to relate um, a context for, for their ancestors and their time and historical events that happen in the United States. So I'm going to preview it so you guys can see um, what how it actually interacts, how it works. So I've got that note there, that's static, right? So it's just a text box with a little background to it. I uh, recorded using the recording applet. It should preview for you. In this web quest, I'm going to ask you to take a look at your past to delve in to uh, historical data and place yourself within a, a relevant historical context and your ancestors back as far as we can get back within the time provided. Okay, so that's nice if you want to put a little more engagement um, within it, especially if it's, you know, if it's an independent activity. You could guide them through using, using video, uh, streaming video as well. So then we get to this uh, this process activity, right? And you'll notice it highlights. It's because I've built a hyperlink into that, and I'm going to show you how to do this on the bottom um, on some stuff that needs to be finished up still. So this guides them through the process. Simple process in this case. It's only two steps. What they have to do is they engage in narrative research. So there's a research component that's going to tie to some ODE standards um, concerning research um, and historical data. So what they're going to do is historical narrative research with their ancestors. So they're going to go to their parents or grandparents, living relatives, and they're going to ask them, well, tell me about my great-grandfather, tell me about your father, and they're going to try to work their way up the ladder and collect narrative information, like full names of people, uh, of their ancestors, dates, locations of births, dates and locations of deaths, uh, marriages, etc. So assuming they've gone back a few generations, then they can go on this, um, on the familysearch.org, which is a free genealogy website, that'll allow us, allow them to look at uh, some actual historical data. Um, so not everybody might get back there, but that's okay, because those who have collected narrative data and only have access to that, they can still carry out the activity. So there's still access for all, it's just some will be able to get further back than others. If you go over to this side here, this is a relatively large uh, text box, so there's a little scroll bar here, which I, I don't really, uh, I'm not in love with because it, it's, it doesn't give permanence to, to the text that's there, but um, you're kind of stuck with the resizing feature in this program, so it, it becomes a little awkward too to get all your data in. Um, so this goes over the assignment, what they actually have to do. So they have to map out a family tree as far back as they can go, and they're going to use this, uh, this online uh, concept map or sem semantic mapping tool called uh, bubble.us or bubble us. Um, they'll create a family tree there and then they'll export it out as a JPEG and they'll, they'll print that as part of the component for the assignment. Um, they'll also pick out um, the earliest ancestor that they have on their tree, the earliest birth, and then they're going to create a timeline for the events of this person's life. So we'll have them do either a paper timeline or they can do some kind of online uh, timeline builder. Um, again, it'll go over they'll go over the birth, marriages, deaths, and birth of children. And there's a link there that'll take them to to that um, semantic mapping tool. Uh, with the events of their timeline, though, and this is where we actually, um, you know, pick up the the history part of it. They um, they'll go and they'll map out ten key events in American history that follow that ancestors. Um, you know, that ancestor's life on the uh, timeline. So in here, I notice I've got a couple of typos, right? So the first thing is I'm going to show you how to edit. So if I go back to editing, if I hover over this, click on it, I can go to edit. Because there's a link in there already, I actually have to scroll down using this, 
using the cursor. And I'm going to definitely add an H to birth. And then down here. Okay. So then I'll hit OK and that'll take uh, take him, put it back in, in, in its place. Um, let's say I want to um, add in one of these, these little text boxes. So I can add in a text box simply by uh, hitting text there. Okay. And then I can choose any of these. Obviously, there's multiple items to choose from, different shapes, different sizes that best serve the purpose. I mean, I want you to work on layout. It needs to be accessible too, and the fact that the contrast is good from the text, from the background, etc. So that that's also a feature that we want to make sure is there. Okay. So we go back to the first one again, and I'm just going to use the thematically what I've been using so far. Okay. So. As I do that, it appears in the background. I can then drag that into place. Um, this particular one, it's going to be um, a link to the grading rubric that I've created on RubyStar, which is an online rubric um, builder. Okay, so I've dragged it into place. I'll hit edit there, so I can edit the text. So that's one assignment. So I'm just going to look at the family tree, and um, you know I could set out further parameters there if I wanted to. Okay. The second one is um, is for them to print and turn in the timeline, and then I tell them to take a look at the rubric before you do so. And there's the, the link to the rubric. So if I want to put the, uh, the hyperlink in there, all I do is hyperlink that, and then I'll paste the link in there too as well. Okay. This, uh, by using the entire URL, it's, it's nice for, um, for individuals that have a hard time decoding text. They can easily see that that's an URL that they're going to, uh, to a website rather than just a piece of text. So it's always better to put the full URL in in terms of accessibility as well. All right, so I've got those uh, those there, right? So if I want to, I can you know hit preview again, and it's gonna again link out. And there's a rubric that I created on Rubistar, so that that's functional for them to be able to see because we can again link out. So um, the only thing missing now would be for me to uh, to add um, what ODE standards this assignment is meeting. Uh, so that would be the last piece of the puzzle. So I just add another box in, and then I go to the ODE website and look up the content standards uh, in question here. Um, then all you have to do is you'd submit this um, the URL to your Glockster uh, once it's it's been published because you'll want to publish that out, right? So hit save or publish. Okay, it'll create a unique URL for it. What area is it in? It's in history. Where's history? History is there. Genealogy and historical events. Hit save there. Should publish out an URL for me. Okay, what's next? Link, link your blog. So that would be the URL that you drop into the Dropbox for this assignment so that I can take a look online. Obviously, you can also share it um, if you're, you know, you've got something going in terms of social media that's uh, working with your classroom, right? If I hit view this blog, Okay. So important components to remember in reviewing WebQuest, right? Number one is we have an intro that in immerses the students into a role, okay? Number two is the process is clearly defined and you've provided the links that you want students to navigate to. Of course, within these boxes, you can only link one thing. 
So you might have to create separate little boxes or separate little text items that, um, that link out to the various locations that you want them to do research on. Clear parameters on the assignments, what your expectations are, which include a grading rubric for at least um, one of the components that you're requiring of them. Okay. Um, and then, of course, make sure that accessibility is good, that the readability is high on the text. Okay. They use the full name of the URLs that they're navigating to. Okay. It would be nice if we could add alt tags on pictures. We can't add alt tags on pictures um, at this point. So I don't think we can. And, um, and that's the whole deal.